Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Studio Live today, Garage Band Weekly for another week. Let's uh, get those uh, get those monitoring off. Uh, hi, my name is Pete Johns. This is Studio Live today, and today on Garage Band Weekly, we're going to be doing something a bit different again because we like to keep changing things up on you. And I'm going to record a cover song. The reason I'm doing this is that uh, I've got a video premiering straight after this show all about how to release covers with DistroKid. And there's one cover song that I just played a little bit of there that I've always wanted to record and do a bit of a laid-back acoustic version of. And uh, not surprisingly, it's a little bit of Credence, Clearwater Revival, and uh, a song called Bad Moon Rising. So I've played it before live and acoustic, and I've always thought that with a couple of layers of acoustic guitar, a couple of vocals in there, that we might get something cool. And that's what I'm going to try here today. But before we get started, we are going to say g'day to some of the fine folks who are here live. So let's say g'day to uh, Jake Starr, to Thomas Christ, to Audible Video. G'day to you. Hello to Joe and Barry Glenn. G'day to Zach Thong. Zach was here lining up well before we even started here today. G'day James Antoine as well. I hope everyone is doing well and uh, doing good or doing well. Either way is fine. Uh, so I've set up a little bit here so far to, to kind of get us started. Let me just turn those uh, monitorings off again. So I'm using GarageBand because it's my spirit animal and because it's where I'm most comfortable. And because this is GarageBand Weekly, it would be very weird if I started recording in Pro Tools on GarageBand Weekly. So I've got a couple of things set up here, as you probably have noticed in the background. In fact, you can't really see. So let's go to the full screen view here. Uh, I've got a microphone down here next to my guitar because I'm going to... A lot of folks ask me, should I mic up my acoustic guitar or should I, if I've got electroacoustic, should I just go in uh, just directly via the, the uh, preamp, uh, the, the pickup on my guitar? And my answer's always been, um, it kind of depends. But more often than not these days, I just use the direct in. So I just wanted to get a bit of a, a bit of a comparison here today. So I thought I would do it. Plus, I wanted to show folks that maybe haven't done this before, haven't used, wrong button, haven't used a two-channel interface to record the same source two ways that it's totally possible and super easy to do. So we're actually going to do that to start with, just to get ourselves set up here. So I'm going to delete out these tracks. We're going to go back to the drawing board here and start afresh. So what I need to do here is set up two audio tracks. So I'm going to go to audio here. I'm going to go instrument, and we're just going to use the acoustic guitar. Nice room here. Now, because I've got a two-channel interface, I've got my guitar plugged into channel two, and I've got this microphone, which is my Audio Technica AT2020, and you can jump on over to the gear guide, studiolivetoday.com slash gear, if you want to check out the gear that I use. So I've got a, a large diaphragm condenser mic, which is usually pretty good for acoustic guitar because it picks up a lot of detail, and I've got myself plugged in as well. So let's set up this channel. So this one, as you can see, as I'm tapping on there, this is my microphone. So let's turn the monitoring on for this one. And if I come down here, you can hear that it's coming through. It's coming through there and we've got that little bit of reverb on there. So, so I probably need to turn up the input gain. Now I'm doing this on my actual audio interface. So I turn up the microphone here and what you'll hear is, you're hearing that background noise here? You can even hear the bus across the road. So whenever I talk about the fact that, I'm just going to turn that all the way down for now. Whenever I talk about the fact that when you're using a condenser microphone, it picks up a lot of detail. I can hear that stuff outside, but because I'm using this, which is a handheld condenser, and I've got the gain set at the right level, you rarely hear any of that in here. But again, as soon as I turn up this condenser microphone to full, you're hearing cars. You're hearing that just general hiss and that general background noise. So you want to find yourself a spot where it's going to pick up enough of the detail, but it's just below that noise floor. So I'm going to turn this up to around about nine o'clock, no, three o'clock, which is three quarters away through and just play and just check the meters there. That's pretty good. So we're sitting there on the input gain around about 70% and that's where we want to be. We don't want this input gain to be too high. In fact, I've probably got a little bit too much there. I'm just going to back it off a little bit 
and uh, be good to go. So that's our microphone. Now the way I set this up is I've got my condenser pointed down at around about my 12th fret, and that gives you the best. If you, what you can do here, if I turn this microphone off, this is the uh, just the guitar audio coming through. So that's about the sound we want. Now you can change that sound. If we want more of the boomy side, we can actually adjust our guitar. So if we have the, this pointed closer to the bottom, let's turn my mic down and take a listen to it now. So you get, you get a very different tone. And if you bring it further around, so if I'm pointing it more at the neck and less at the body of the guitar, you get a different sound again. So there you go, we've got different sounds. So you can play around with the sound if you're using a microphone and it is trial and error. People say to me, how do I set my microphone? Where do I put it? It is all trial and error. Let's turn that uh, turn that monitor off because that's gonna get really annoying. The other track then we need to set up is our direct input. So let's tap on this one and hit the duplicate button and come in here. And this time what we need to do is actually change this to be channel two. So once we change this to channel two, now this, when we turn the monitoring on, this is our direct signal. So you can hear that we're getting a very different kind of sound there. And what the cool thing about this is we can record this both ways and blend them together. So if we turn the monitoring on for both of these now and we play. And is it just me or is the sound better coming direct? <laughs> And this is what I've been finding lately, that I get much better direct sound than I do trying to uh, position a microphone with all the background sound and the room sounds and all the rest of it. So, we'll, But we'll record both of these and then we'll experiment with them. Let's say good day to a few folks who have dropped in. Uh, oh, hello to Mark. Hello, everyone. In no mood to stay. I had four teeth pulled out. I'm really sorry, Mark. Uh, yeah, have fun. We'll see you around, my friend. Yeah, nothing. Nothing worse. Ouch. Big time. Um, yeah, yeah, I hope you got some good quality painkillers there. Hello, Rena. Hello, Still Illa. Hope you folks are doing well. G'day, Joe and Barry Glenn. If I didn't say g'day to you before, and uh, yeah, I think I've, I think I've said g'day to everyone. Let's um, let's let's get to a bit of a take recorded here because what I've got is I've got my chords here. This is a very simple song, and the reason I wanted to do this one is I thought it would be simple and we might be able to get a big chunk of it, at least a demo version of this recorded in the hour of the show here. So there is my details. So I'll just need to zoom out a little bit on that one. So you can see it's in D major and I've already got my stuff set up over here to be in D major. So I've got my D major set there at about 116 BPM. Now, if you know me, you know that I don't like to record along to the metronome because to me, that sound just ain't inspiring. So when I record my first take, I want to actually have some drums in there. So for this one, I think I want to probably use a percussionist. We're going to scroll across and grab our drummer, and I'm going to come in here to percussion and uh, just find a very basic uh, sort of song, singer-songwriter style percussion. So if we come in here and we go to Finn, my old mate Finn, we just want it simple and loud with maybe like a cajon, uh, maybe just the cajon. Let's see what this gives us. Yeah, I think we actually need to get just go with a standard drummer because we need something. We may actually need Kyle. We may need Kyle because we really need a very straightforward kick, snare, hi-hat sort of just to play along with here. So. I think we're going to go with something like that, but we just need it to be a bit softer. Yeah, should we go Anders? <laughs> yeah, we literally just need the simplest of of uh, drums just to keep us in the beat and the groove here. So what we want to do is let's just give ourselves a whole bunch of space. We can do sections later if we want to, but we're just going to give ourselves all the room here. 
uh, to play it out. And I'm just going to build out the progression here of the song, uh, kind of in segments, just playing, just playing in some rough, um, rough chords and rough ideas here. So uh, just to get the, the idea of where everything's going to go um, in this track, because it's a pretty quick track, uh, probably be about two and a half minutes, which is, why, again, why I wanted to do this. So uh, I'll, I'll sing along as I play this, just so I know where I'm up to. But uh, let's get these set up. So two, set up two tracks, by the way. We tap the record and we have both record lights on. If we want to monitor, we can tap that and tap that. And now we're monitoring both through the microphone down there and through this one here. So we're gonna get to some interesting sounds here. Let's uh, let's hit record, shall we, and give it a crack. About this one. trouble on the way I see earthquakes and lightning I see bad times today Don't go around tonight Well it's bound to take your life there's a bad moon on the rise So that's the basic premise now. I did a couple of things badly there. Number one, I'm bumping this microphone with my arm because I'm, I'm so not used to uh, recording with a microphone. I'm so used to recording direct in these days. So that's something that I'll need to play around with as we go. Um, and the other thing is I've probably got a little bit too loud. So if we play these back, uh, let's just take a listen to what these are sounding like. So there's our, <laughs> and yeah, these are scratch guitars. So you're going to hear my voice in the background, which is obviously something we're not going to keep in there. But this is the, you can hear how just kind of, it's almost harsh sounding because I'm using the condenser mic here. So I don't love that. Whereas, I don't know, there's something about the the um the pickup on this Taylor. That I just think you get a better sound through that. So uh, we'll, we'll try that again. But and, and the thing is, we can blend this. So what I'll generally do is just have it sort of like that. So we can actually use both of them. So what we're going to do is uh, scrap that and do it again just for that section through from the start to there. Uh, and do so we'll do one verse and one chorus and then we can sort of build out from there because I want to show some of the, the vocals and some of the mixing and other treatment that we do here. So we'll bring both of these back up. We'll turn them both on again. Now we can highlight both of these by dragging a box. Don't forget you can drag a box. Delete. And we're going to hit the record button and... Uh, I'll try and get a decent recording in here without me singing, just so that we've got a basis to move on from here. You know what we need to do? Is not have those uh, soloed. Because we can't hear our mate Kyle. One, two.
bump that mic right at the end there. Yeah, so again, I've tried to be quiet there, but I think the sound that we probably want there is maybe blended in here. Let's just turn these off again. So just blending a little bit of the microphone in, but mostly with the, um, the pickup. So you can hear there that the good thing about having the microphone there is that the guitar on its own is sounding a little thin. And then as you bring in the second microphone. You get more of the body, that full body, full bodied sound of the guitar coming in there. So there's a couple of options there. So let's just uh, zoom in here. So it's going to be hard getting past this microphone here. I'm not used to having so much gear in the way. So let's just find the bar where we start it. It's there. And just tag that so I know where we're actually coming in there on bar seven is where it's at. So we'll just uh, we'll split that there just so that I know the spot that it's at. So that's where uh, this is going to be coming in here. And uh, this time around, I think I only did one one like this, and then started doing it. I see a bad. Yep. So from there. So uh, let's get in and uh, start working on a little bit of vocal. By the way, the, the plan with the guitar here, as you probably heard, when I was playing that part, and we'll just bring the monitor back on. So when I play this uh, solo, um, I have to do both parts. So what I'm actually thinking is recording like a... Because the good thing about multi-tracking is, is you can do both. like that um, and then just go just have the other one that I can just focus on the lead part so yeah we'll try that uh, 85 direct yeah so Tom's got a good idea we could put the, uh, the the microphone further away and get more room tone we will try that when we come back to the guitar Tom we're going to try that so this is why I love doing these things live uh, and then you're right, you can get more of that room sound by having the mic. You don't have to mic the guitar straight up. You can try different things. I'll pop it over by my light over there and get some, like deliberately get some of the reverberations from the room sound. So yeah, we'll give that a crack. All right, let's put the guitar down. Too many cables. Too many cables going on here. <clears throat> now, ordinarily, I will use a dynamic microphone here, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you again the difference between a condenser and a dynamic. So we're going to bring in, we're going to bring in the condenser here, and I'm going to sing. Now, I'm not using a pop filter, you know, I'm going <laughs> going a bit risky here. I'm going to just sort of sing from above and off to the side. So if you don't have a pop filter, let's turn it on and I'll uh, start explaining what I mean here. If we add a new track, we're going to go boom, and then we're going to go to an audio track. And this time, we want it to be a voice. And if we turn the monitor on, on, there I am. Oh, so I'm, I've removed, I've removed this microphone, and we're talking just on this. Now I'll need to put the volume down, which I'm doing now. So I'm just riding the input gain down on the microphone. But what you're hearing is that this picks up a lot, doesn't it? It really does. Whereas a dynamic microphone doesn't have that level. And if I turn off uh, all of this stuff here, like the reverb, it's because I don't have a lot of noise in this room, it's not too bad. It's actually doing a good job of picking up just my voice. Uh, but the compressor is pretty high. And the more you put the compressor up, the more sort of direct that sound sounds. So there's a few things to consider when you're doing this. And the other thing is never put on the voice control because it creates that latency that you can hear if I turn this microphone back up. up can, can you hear how much latency is there? Whereas if I turn that off, it's almost zero latency. So don't, even though it's kind of fun to sound like T-Pain, it's not worth it. So we'll leave that off for now and we'll uh, we'll record in uh, a vocal take of the first one. Yeah, hey fat panda cat, a little bit of ASMR, right? Okay. Let's um let's cue this one up 
and uh, get ready to uh, record some vocals. I see a bad moon rising I see trouble on the way I see earthquakes and lightning I see bad times today Don't go out tonight Well, it's bound to take your life There's a bad moon on the rise So there's a... Uh, there's a little bit of uh, what we're doing here. So if we come back to our main screen here, take a look at that waveform. That's about right. So if you are getting a whole bunch of lumpiness on here, then your gain's up too loud. If you're getting, you know, little waveforms that are not bumping up at all, your gain's too low. This is... I see a bad moon rising. Is around about right, yeah? I see trouble on the way. Let's put a bit of that vocal hall back on. I see earthquakes and lightning I see bad times today Don't go out tonight So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you a comparison here of a dynamic microphone. So again, I talk so much about dynamics versus condenser mics, uh, but sometimes it's not until you actually hear the difference that you understand why you want one for some purposes and one for another. So if you listened to that vocal, you'd hear, yeah, it's pretty darn harsh, right? Let's um, duplicate exactly that same vocal chain out here, bring it over here, and this time I've got this. My AKG D5 is plugged in. So if we turn the monitoring on now, and I switch off this mic, I'm now on this mic here. But can you hear, let's just turn that reverb off. You can hear and see how much lower that is. I see a bad, even if I'm belting it out, it's lower. And that's because you need more gain. You don't have that preamp, you don't have the, not preamp, you don't have the phantom power in this. So I'll need to turn that up. And now remember when I did that test before with the condenser mic where I turned it to full volume? Let's do this with the dynamic. So this is full volume on the dynamic. You can hear that it's still going to clip if I talk like this. But you can hear a lot. You can't hear the buses, can you? Can't hear the cars. Can't hear the street noise. Not much. Very little fan noise. So that's a good demonstration of why a dynamic mic is much better. If you're in an apartment, if you're surrounded by a lot of noise and you need to get your gain up or you're recording quiet vocals, yeah, contrary to popular belief, people think quiet vocals, you need to get a, a condenser Sometimes you want a dynamic for exactly that reason. You want to reject a lot of that background noise. All right, let's uh, turn a little bit of that hall back on. Uh, I'm going to sing a, uh, I'm going to sing a, a, what do they call it? A harmony part that I normally do when I do this in the second verse, but I'm just going to do it in this first verse because we're really just going to get like the first verse and first, first chorus done here today. So let's cue this on up and uh, hit record. <laughs> I see a bad moon rising I see trouble on the way I see earthquakes and lightning I see bad times today Don't go out tonight Well, it's bound to take your life There's a bad moon on the rise 
so 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 there's a little bit of uh, the difference in the vocals so what we can do here is uh, is take a look at the difference now you can see here that I even probably turned it up a little bit too loud on that dynamic. So uh, I could probably put that down a little bit because it's getting a little bit clippy. Let's take a listen. I see a bad moon arising. So it's, yeah, it's not bad. If you compare that to the condenser microphone, just take a listen to the difference in the tone. I see a bad moon arising. So there's nothing wrong with either of them, and they're using the exact same processing. But if you listen to the uh, dynamic, I see a bad moon arising. It's just a little bit more, a little bit softer. It doesn't have quite the harshness. It doesn't have a lot of top end. And yeah, you can change that around with with EQ. So if I was worried about the EQ on this one, I could come in here and just ride the the treble down a bit. And I often do. I'll often give it a cut and uh, just bring the, the high end down on a condenser microphone so that you can actually get a little bit less harshness on that. I see a bad moon arising. So you can just remove a bit of that. I see. But you can hear there's a lot more of the breath, there's a lot more of the background noise on the condenser mic. So that's the difference between the two. Let's bring everything back together, find the right volume match between these, um, these two vocals. I see a bad moon rising I see trouble on the way I see earthquakes and lightning I see bad times I'd throw a third harmony part in there. Just oh yeah, I thought I peaked that first bit. I thought uh, I had the volume up too loud. Let's just take a listen to that. Don't go out. Did you hear it? Did you hear? That's your digital clipping. That's sounding awful. So that means my input game was up too loud. Take a listen. Don't go out. Did you hear it? It got that crunchiness, and you saw you saw the red dot there, and you hopefully heard the crunchiness. So let's just uh, delete that. What I'm going to do is come in here and turn my input gain down a little bit on that microphone, just down about a, about an eighth of a turn, just to reduce this volume a little bit. And let's um, sing this. Bad times today. Don't go out tonight. Well, it's bad. I think I clipped it again. It needs to go down even lower, especially because it's a backing vocal part. Let's uh, try that again. Do it. Bad times today. Don't go out tonight. Well, it's bound to take your life. There's a bad moon on the rise. We'll give that a go. So we've got a little bit of, you know, a little bit of three-part harmony going on in there, and uh, hopefully you got to hear that. Oh, there you go. I turned it way down, didn't I? Let's see if it even showed up. Don't go around. Okay, so I went a little bit too low on that one. So yeah, you, you can get the, the feel here that you can very easily go too high or too low. You've got to find right in the middle there. Uh, yeah, I know. It's a, it's a cool tune, and I really dig it. Um, we've got folks talking about, is there a, uh, is there a documentary, a CCR documentary? Uh, my interface has quiet preamps, so I can crank it. Well. Yeah, and again, this is why when people ask me, where do I set my preamp? I'm like, it depends on so many factors. It depends on the software you're using. It depends on the hardware, the audio interface you're using, the microphone you're using, your own voice, and your personal preferences. So <laughs> the answer is never seven. It's always trial and error. And as you saw there, the trial and error between that and that was only like a quarter of a turn on the preamp. So, uh, yeah, you, you do have to be conscious of that. So let's just take a listen back to this. Well, we nearly lost it. <laughs> that, was, that was less than ideal. Are you coming back to me? Oh, it's doing something weird now. All right, we just need to unplug and replug here, folks. Boop. Uh, back here. 
I'm surprised that we don't, haven't had more gremlins in the system here of late because, um, yeah, we've had some really weird and wonderful weather here in Adelaide over the last uh, little bit. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people lost power. So I think 70,000 people, 70,000 homes in Adelaide. There's only like 1.8 million people in Adelaide uh, lost their power. So it was pretty, pretty bad. All right, is this working now? Are you back? Are you going to play? Don't go out tonight. Well, it's bound to take your life. There's a bad move. There you go. Um, all right, so we'll leave everything kind of just down the middle for the time being, just to, to play around with it. Let's go back to the guitar, because I wanted to try a couple of little guitar ideas that, um, that Thomas talked about before. Number one being to move the microphone even further away to get more of a room tone uh, when we record this guitar. So let's do that. I'm just going to... You have to bear with me, because you won't be able to hear me for a sec. I'm going to move the microphone right over to where next to my mic is. So, so now I'm probably... There you go. <laughs> you heard it come back in. So now you can hear a little bit of that room sound, can't you? Because that's this, this one here. It's, it's all the way over there. If I turn off my mic here, you can hear come of that echo and that distance. So we're going to see if this is going to work when we bring it in as uh, another guitar tone. So let's set up uh, our couple of guitar tones as well. So we can duplicate these out because we know that this one is set for our microphone. So if we duplicate that, we know that's our microphone. And if we duplicate this one, this is our line in. In fact, let's change our icons here, tap and go to icons, just so that we know which ones we're using. So with this one, we're just gonna go to a uh, other, and we'll just use that one there. That's so we know that these are our microphone ones. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, icon, other, and that. It's not really a microphone icon, is it? And this one we need like a line icon, so we know that these are our direct line ins. Icon. <laughs> is there one that's just like a, a jack, like a line in jack or something? We'll go with that. <laughs> these are not quite right, but you know what I mean. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as you know what it is, right? Okay, so this way we know that these ones are our direct line ins because these are our input two and these ones are going to be our input one. So let's uh, turn these up, put the record on to both of these and the, uh, there we go. Uh, so I'll grab my guitar. We've got the guitar back again and... So you're hearing the direct line input of the guitar there and this one over here, if we just solo that, I'll turn my mic down and just take a listen to what this distant room mic's gonna do for us now. Pretty good, yeah. So I think this could be good. This could be a good idea, Thomas. I like your work. <coughs> All right, I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna move this one up here. Tap and hold, drag up. Uh, move this one to here so we can do this. So what I'm going to do this time is this take, I'm going to do a lead. So I'm just going to do the lead part and um, attempt to record just this one in uh, here. So we'll, we'll give it a go. Um, we need a drummer back. Bring back Kyle. Come on, Kyle. You can do it. All right, so I'll give myself two bars of lead in here, and then I'll know that I've got a... All right, let's try it.
So, yeah, there's some ideas in there that are kind of in the ballpark. But what I think I need to do is actually do it the other way around. Mute out these ones and record in just the rhythm guitar part first and then try that again on the lead part. So let's do that. We're going to mute these and we're going to record again. Whoops. Don't want that one as the input channel. Want that one and that one. There you go. So we've got these two and this time we're just going to uh, do a bit of a... Let's give this a go, shall we? So you can see and hear there that this one here, our room mic is not picking up a whole lot, but it's going to get some pretty kick-ass ambience. Let's just uh, come down here and take a listen to just what that room mic's getting for us. Right? So it's a bit kind of distant and thin, but when we bring it in with our... Yeah? Just off there in the distance, yeah? And what might be cool on this is to use like a stereo width plugin to kind of push it a bit wider too, just to really emphasize the sound of the room. So if we grab something like Wider, which is free, by the way, a free plugin that you can throw on your tracks. Wider, I see it, there it is, Infected Mushroom. By the way, folks, did you hear the news? Um, yeah, Positive Grid are discontinuing support for Final Touch my favorite mastering app on iOS. They've said that, yeah, it, it because uh, they got, there were some folks that reached out to them because it wasn't working with iOS 16.1. Apparently it does work with iOS 16.11. So, but they've basically said, yeah, we haven't been supporting it for a couple of years and we plan to discontinue it entirely, which is a bit shh, not good. Let's just give like uh, maybe about 40% extra width on, on this background noise because... Uh, there you go. It's really spread it out. Right? Cool. All right, so let's uh, let's now bring this back together and we'll do another duplicate and another duplicate. Oh, didn't duplicate that correctly. Bo -bo 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 -bo. and duplicate. All right, so we'll bring this one down. So that will be our uh, rhythm part. Let's play around and try and actually separately record. So the lead part's gonna be a... All right, let's just see if we can, uh, can get this happening here. So we've got these two set up. We will uh, bring them back on like that. What I might do Even though this is a lead part I'm going to play a little bit higher up uh, As far as where I play it here As opposed to So yeah, I might um, Give it a little bit of a, More of a mellow tone by playing it Mellow tone? Not a melaton Not a mellotron But a mellow <laughs> Tone. So uh, let's experiment with this. So we've got everything playing there. Yep, hit record. Right. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
show to the door. Kyle there. Let's just hear these both together. You know when you've got something in your head and then you play it, it's not quite exactly what you planned, but that's okay. Uh, we'll just play it from here. Yeah, just some timing issues there. I think we need to work on. What could be cool is uh, like putting this off to one side one time and then like one side the other. So I'm just coming up with ideas here just for what it will be like eventually. But I like the idea of this sort of just sitting off to one side. So like with this bit, like listen. Could just kind of switch it between the two. You know what it could actually be? It could be like a call and response. You could do the da 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 on the right, and then the da 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 da, and do it with like two different guitar parts. There's some options here, I reckon. There's some things that we can actually do differently here. Um, or you could even, is, now is there, I guess the other question I have with this is we've got a bit of the basics down here. Do we need uh, any other instrumentation? If I was going to do this as a cover song, and I wanted to do it. In fact, while you ponder that thought, what I'll do is I'll play you, I'll play you the, the original version that I did, that I recorded on about four tracks in GarageBand a while back. And this is the basis of what, I didn't want to play this at the start and kind of shadow overshadow what we're going to do here today. But uh, if I just find this bad moon rising, uh, take a listen to this cover version that I originally did. And let me know, do we keep it very thin and just like light with just the acoustic guitar? Or do we expand it out and add maybe some like organ or some, some whirly, just sort of playing some chords in the background or something like that? And in terms of percussion, what do you think we should add in here? Now is, is your time to shine, your time to tell me what you think should be in there. So let's go back to uh, whatever this was. This is three years ago when I first did this one. Uh, actually, it was longer than that. March 2018. Yes, the before time, the very, very long ago. Uh, March 2018, John's here playing this one. So I'll play you this. It's uh, three and a half minutes uh, while I finish some stuff. Put the mic, put the guitar down. And uh, yeah, when we return, uh, let me know your thoughts and we'll have a bit of a wee chat before we finish off the show. <laughs> Today, and 
don't go out tonight Cause it's bound to take your life There's a bad moon on the rise Hurricanes are blowing. So that was the uh, original concept, and that was what I was trying to recreate here today. I guess what I forgot is I actually played it up a little bit because my version that I recorded here today, I recorded in D major. That one sounds like it's up in around about uh, F or G. Uh, let's take a listen to the comparison here. Turn this back up. See a bad moon arising. What do you reckon, folks? Down there or up here? There's a bad moon on the rise. Hope you. I see. What do we reckon? Do we, because uh, the other version was up. A little higher on it, uh, and a little bit faster. So, hmm, ponderous, man, really ponderous. So, I do think we need to speed it up a little bit, which we can't really do now on this version. But we'll uh, we'll have a fiddle around with that. Uh, but yeah, let, let me know your thoughts on this one. Uh, thank you. Yeah, the, the, the what I liked about this song is that I think the the harmonies there sound really good in uh, in that old version. And I wanted to try and kind of recreate that. Uh, thank you, Mike and Dawn Janice. Uh, have you heard music, travel, love, all acoustic covers, lots of heart? Oh, no, I haven't. Over four million. Very nice. Might have to try that. Uh, yeah, music, travel, love. Acoustic covers, good stuff. Um, so, yeah, back to the, the final touch thing that we are talking about before, by the way. So, if you're not familiar with final touch, so I'm still on 15.7 here because this is my daily driver iPad and I need to use it for all sorts of stuff. And I know a lot of the time I say I'm the guinea pig for you, but uh, when it comes to being able to actually produce music, not so much. Um, so you can see here that, look, this, this app just hasn't been updated in a long time. It is still in the format here of the older iPad. Like, it hasn't been updated in maybe four or five years, um, but it is still, in my opinion, one of the best mastering apps for iOS. And, yeah, it is a little bit sad that it's going away. But we do have options. So you've got Grand Finale. So Clev, Clev Grand have just released Grand Finale version 2 which is a great mastering option for your iPad. And there's also the Lurson Mastering Console, which is like the grand pappy of them all, which has a lot of options, but is you know, upwards of 100 I think $150 by the time you buy all the, all the bells and whistles to go along with it. So you yeah, can do something like that. Um, or you can just master, you know what, a lot of people get a bit excited about mastering. You can master for free through BandLab. BandLab have a free mastering uh, free mastering option on their the web version as well as the the ios version but the ios version only exports at uh, m4a compressed file so you don't <laughs> you don't want a compressed master do you not not the right idea um so yeah so that's the other option now uh, in terms of what we need i do think we need some bass someone mentioned bass so i definitely think we need a little bit of bass on this one so maybe we'll play around with that <laughs> let's remark yeah i know and look it's the it's the risk you take isn't it when you when you buy something or when you install something it's, it's this constant race between Apple updating iOS and then the developers and the Apple will blame the developers, the developers will blame Apple. At the end of the day, it's usually the customers. It's a bit like the whole Twitter debacle at the moment. It's the employees and the customers that suffer the most in the end. It's not anyone. It's not the actual companies and it's definitely not the, the rich, mentally ill billionaires that uh, run this stuff. Yeah, $160 bucks for that one. Uh, higher or both. Yeah, we could have a, we could have a, um, a key change in this. <laughs> So I think uh, I think what I've learned out of this today is that I loved Thomas's idea. So let, let's just recap uh, what we did here today, and then maybe we'll just we'll finish off by doing a little bit of a bass sound on the guitar. So I love Thomas's idea where we used this microphone as a room mic to be a bit further away. So that gave us this really nice tone on the guitar, like this. That really distant kind of tone to blend in with it. I like the idea of using some panning side to side um, on that one. 
Don't think we need anything in the way of drums. Maybe we need like a boom, 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 boom. maybe we need like a very soft percussion that kicks in maybe just in the chorus. That's something I'll consider with this as well. Um, I'm pretty happy with the vocals. Uh, I like the the. I probably prefer the dynamic mic. I think that the these ones here on the condenser mic were a little bit too harsh. So I'd probably go with the dynamic uh, and the. Um, I see trouble on the way. And yet, I probably will take it up a couple of tones. So probably put a capo on the second to bring it up into E major or even up to F major, up on the third, because it's in D major at the moment. So yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll play around with some of that sort of stuff. So um, let's just use a virtual instrument to see if we can get a, a bass sound on this one, because I think just like a, almost like just a standard Liverpool bass might work on this. Uh, if we come in here to our notes, not, we're not what the upright bass, <laughs> not playing on the upright bass. So let's just go the Liverpool. Let's just uh, let's just experiment real quick with a little bit of bass sound here. Moon Need to go back a little bit than that, don't we? Back here. I hit so many wrong notes there. You could get the idea of what I'm going for there, though, yeah? I think that could work well. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I know. The Liverpool bass does sound nice and mixes in good. I reckon so. I think it's uh, I think it's a way to go. All right. Um, let's just fix some of these notes. Because <laughs> otherwise it's going to be bad. moon rising. Trouble the on the way. Get rid of that little note. I see earthquakes and lightning. This is a good part about virtual instruments, right? I see bad times today. some of these little bits in between and then on the <laughs> easy fixed <laughs> all right so i think it's kind of it's kind of coming together here uh it's definitely going to be a fun one to record i will be doing some live shows and a few sort of pre-record things showing this uh, probably on patreon to start with so it's a good idea to support me on patreon if you're not already uh so you can see a little bit more behind the scenes stuff as we build out this song into a full cover song and then eventually release it with distro kid because that's what we're here for yeah uh so so yeah, there's uh, it's it's a start, and I think it's uh, I think it's going to be cool. I think it's going to work. I think just a little bit of bass, maybe some gentle percussion in the choruses, uh, and yeah, because I'm probably it'll be interesting. I wonder if I'm going to get a copyright claim. What do you think? Do you think that this is going to be close enough to the original to actually generate a copyright claim? I don't know. Possibly. Um, hello, JP Music, Jean-Paul. Uh, yes, goodbye, Final Touch. We hardly knew ye. And look, the writing was on the wall for a long time. I, I'm actually surprised that it still works now. Like, it's every, every update since about iOS 13, there's been an issue with Final Touch. And then they've, I, I don't know, they've, they've just slightly tweaked it and it's worked again. Or iOS have changed things and it's worked again. But, um, yeah, it, it is a bit, it is a bit sad because it was, uh, it did have all the things you needed. 
Um, hello, yes, hello, JP. Uh, Caleb, yes, you've been asking about Tool. I think so. I've actually been thinking. There's a couple of Tool songs that I really like. There's, there's a Tool song called Hooker with a Penis, which is what the technical term for the, your appendage is, uh, which I really dig. And um, I've been meaning to uh, do a cover of that one because I do love, and Jimmy. So basically anything from the Arnhem album, I love Tool. I think Tool are cool. <laughs> I love tools, not, I love Tool, not Tools. I don't love um, people like the FPX guy and Elon who uh, are Tools and uh, abuse their people. Uh, yeah, so Cubasis 3 does come with a master, master strip at its half price. Absolutely. Uh, and you can get the waves in-app plugins. So yeah, Cubasis 3 is something that I need to re-explore again because I haven't used it in a while, but it is really, really good. It really does well. Uh, I use an H1N. Ah, nothing wrong with the old uh, the old Zoom. I use a Zoom mixer and it works well. Hello, Will Lowe. I hope you are well. You need help with your music. You've come to the right place. And look, you're over on Facebook. So go to the Create, Record, Release Facebook group. It is very cool. Uh, if you Google Mastering on iOS, it brings up loads of Pete's videos. Finally, the evil algorithm is doing something good. Yeah, it's true. Like, it's, it's actually pretty fun when people are like, oh my God, I Googled something and uh, it, it came up. So yeah, if you Google uh, mastering, I, mastering Music on iPad in the old Googles, um, yeah, the, the first video that it brings up is one that I did, which is pretty darn cool. It is uh, this one here. There you go. And then the second one is uh, the, oh, that's Lursa Mastering Console. Uh, yeah, so I'm like, one, two, uh, one, three, five, six. <laughs> and uh, of course, Final Touch is, uh, is showing up strongly there. Uh, that was where I did Final Touch versus Grand Finale, which I guess uh, Grand Finale wins by default now. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy for them. Because, um, yeah, it's just going to be the default thing. Oh, a car scar cover of Skiz. Oh, my God. Yeah, do do a, do a tool song. That's what we should do in the future. We should do a cover song. I have to create a cover song. Uh, you know how I was doing the series where it was like, you tell me the, the genre that I have to play. We could do that, but with uh, what what genre and what song. So it's like tool, and it's got to be bossa nova style. <laughs> do, 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 do. 46 and twos just ahead of me. Do, 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 do. That could actually work surprisingly well. Like have a bossa nova beat. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, 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 no, I'm going off the, the track here because it's been a long weekend. <laughs> I must say, there's been a lot going on here, but it's not over yet because if uh, you hang around straight after this show, in fact, in about two minutes time, what I have is a brand new video, uh, which is this one over here. It is a premiere video that's about to hit the airwaves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a link. I'm going to copy the link and I'm going to throw it right here in the chat because that one is going to be premiering very soon. If you jump on in here, you can see. Oh, look, it's already started counting down. Did I set it for the wrong time or am I? Oh, I'm already over time because it's already 10.31. So uh, you got about three minutes there. You can jump on over to the uh, how to release your cover song. Let's listen to the funky music. This is getting all a bit Inception, isn't it? Yeah. Bossa Nova button tool. I know, you do the Bossa Nova button. Thomas Christ has a really cool song from his uh, his Folk U side project called the Bossa Nova button, uh, which is awesome. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, thanks. that's going to do it for uh, this episode of Garage Band Weekly. But as I mentioned, uh, if you would do me a solid and jump on over, because you, you're going to learn how simple it is. If you're already a DistroKid member, super simple to release your music with DistroKid. And if you're not, it's well worth joining up. And uh, Jade Starr, who is already over there on the... Uh, on the other video, there she is, saying hello, uh, one of our wonderful moderators. Uh, Jade and I released a cover song a while ago. Uh, so we released a cover song of Ben Fold's Smoke, uh, and I actually referenced that here. So if you uh, if you wanted to check that one out, uh, if we go Jade Star Smoke, <laughs> it's not a video of Jade Star Smoking, this one here. Very, very cool. So this was released with Distro Kid and is another cover song. So I've actually released two covers, and I'm about to do a third. So that one is going to do it. Yes, if you would like to hit the like button on your way out, jump on over to the premiere and uh, I will see you right there. It will dump you straight there as soon as I hit this farewell button. So thanks for hanging out today. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe learned a thing about icons and recording and experimenting with GarageBand. Remember, uh, as Jade says, mistakes make you better. Experimentation definitely makes you better. Trying new things. A lot of folks are like, I'm just finding a way to do things and I'll do that way forever. Have Just trying something new. 
do, try that this week. Go out there and do something you've never done before with your music. You, you might have some fun. All right, that is going to do it for this one. I will see you over on the premiere. If you're watching on the replay, that premiere will be linked down in the description of this one so you can check it out as well. And until next time, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, folks. Keep creating. And I'll see you next time on Garage Band. Garage